I'm always interested in the future of money. So I'm always curious about what's going on in cryptocurrency. Um, and like a lot of other people, I, I'm kind of, you know, at the same time, sort of fascinated and horrified by the way that the markets go up and down in response to Elon Musk's tweets and other social media pronouncements. I mean, it, it's really rather fascinating. On one level, I kind of agree with um, Kathleen Brightman, one of the co-founders of Tezos, uh, who said that, um, you know, being disappointed in Elon Musk's tweets is sort of just punishment for caring about them in the first place. And there's a lot to be said for that view. But nonetheless, it's interesting how, you know, billions of dollars can, can, can be made or lost uh, on account of, of his tweets. Like, he, you know, he's kind of really that cryptocurrency economy is is vulnerable to, you know, the, the thoughts of a single person. And that sort of led me to think, oh, well, I want, you know, I wonder how that is fits in context with like the real economy. Like when 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 was somebody, you know, so rich and so powerful that they could they could change the real economy in that way? And of course, you know, we then we think of the tycoons you know, Morgan and, and, and so on. Um, and that, of course, led me to wonder, like, just how rich do you have to be to do that? And that led me to think, well, wait, wait a minute, who, who, of the, who was the richest person? <laughs> and then that led me to think, well, the richest person in history, you know, was, was, a, was a, um, a monarch because, because, you know, the, the wealth of the whole nation was bound up in the wealth of the monarch. Um, you know, when Richard the Lionheart was kidnapped, his ransom was was more than GDP. I mean, the, you know, the company, the, the whole country went into penury to pay it. So so we have to look to a time when the, uh, you know, the richest person controlled money that was theirs, not money of the nation or money they didn't. You know, so, I mean, by, by that, the measure of, you know, who was the richest person ever lived? Well, the richest person ever lived was Maza Musa, who was the king of Mali. He took 12,000 slaves with him on his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. And somehow I don't think, um, I mean, Elon Musk has a lot more Twitter followers, but I don't think they'd march through the desert behind him carrying bags of gold. Um, of oh, course, they are carrying bags of Dogecoin. Maybe, maybe one day that will be the same thing. So, so no, so not someone like Masamusa, who was a monarch and had the wealth of the whole country. Like, who, who was the, who was the first person who was like really rich, the first kind of businessman in the modern sense, the person who controlled capital, and you know there are some different candidates people come up with. Um, for that, but I, but I think the first reasonable candidate for that um, is Jacob Fugger of Augsburg, known as Jacob, Jacob II, actually, who, who became known as Jacob the Rich. And he was, a, he was a businessman in the modern type. He used the modern innovations. He used things like um, to du double entry bookkeeping to make extended enterprise viable, the first kind of modern company. In 1441, his father had married the daughter of a mint master who went bankrupt and, um, um, and had gone into business uh, and, and made a great success out of it, which gave him the capital to, to play with. And, uh, and uh, you know, Jacob was able to extend that in all sorts of interesting ways. I mean, the reason why he sticks out is that he rather famously gave Charles V the money that he needed to bribe electors in order to make him Holy Roman Emperor, which is, you know, Voltaire said wasn't holy, wasn't Roman, it wasn't an empire, but it doesn't matter. So he was, re and, and, and in return, the Pope gave him, uh, in, in return, he was, he was given the ability to sell papal indulgences, which meant that he was rich enough to get people out of hell. I mean, that's quite a benchmark. Um, I mean, Elon Musk might be rich enough to get us to Mars, but not to get us out of hell. That's, a, that's altogether another standard. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't think J Jacob wasn't the richest, but the, 
the, the person with the most control, the richest person, the benchmark for that, I think, is, is who's the person that controlled the biggest fraction of GDP of what was at the time the richest company, uh, the richest country in the world. By that benchmark, it was probably Nathan, Nathan Rothschild, um, who rather, he, who died in 1836 from blood poisoning, which, which to, he was the richest person um, and he died of something that a few pennies worth of antibiotics would, would fix now. But um, anyway, so um, so Jacob, by the way, Jacob was an innovator in many other ways. He, he built cottages for, the, for his workers to live in, the Fuggerai, which you can still see today in Augsburg. Um, quite, quite an innovator. Anyway, so he, so he was the first kind of modern super rich businessman, is my point, as the, like the break point from ancient history. Uh, and he controlled, you know, a huge wealth. Uh, but when he, when he died, he left what's now the equivalent of probably only 100 million or something. Um, and obviously, you know, Elon Musk has, has much greater wealth than that. But as a fraction of, you know, US GDP, um, even by the standards of late stage capitalism's um, non-linear, inequality that's unsustainable on almost every level um he, he controls a much smaller proportion of the american economy so so my question is is elon musk a fugger you know can he control and and the answer is well no he isn't um I mean, he does make for wild swings in the price of assets, which allow some people to become fabulously wealthy. Let's call them the, the whales, the insiders, and, and is ruinous for other people. But I'm sure the SEC will have words to say about that in time. So, I mean, he does control those swings, but it's not because of the capital he controls. Jacob Fugger didn't have social media. He didn't have access to Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of those other things. It, it's curious to me that Musk's wealth and his, like his influence over the value of, of cryptocurrencies, you know, in a way doesn't come from his wealth. It's not, it's not his, you know, he, he's not manipulating the economy through, through deploying his, 150 billion or whatever he's, he's worth now. It's amplifying and resonating through social media. And that's another break point in history. So we had that break point when you went from having the wealth of the monarch and the nation all bundled up together. Then you had this break point, Jacob the Rich, where suddenly you had people that could control capital in their own right. And now we're coming to another break point where something else weird is happening to our society which um you know which is to do with being always on and always interconnected anyway what's the point of my rambling on about this my point is Jacob the second the rich is is famous to me anyway at least because of one one thing he rather one thing he nailed so he he said the king reigns but the bank rules which you know anticipated um who was the guy that said when i die i want to come back as the bond market it, it was one of um it was one of bill clinton's uh, people wasn't it anyway anyway the point is Jacob, you know was 500 years ahead of him in all this sort of thing but i wonder and so that became the defining statement if you like of the of the age we've just lived through the age of um capitalism and the 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 sort of post medieval settlement between the the state and the city um the king reigns but the bank rules but now we're just about to move into another era where you know the bank sort of doesn't rule anymore because of influences and i wonder if historians of the future will look back and see this as the same kind of cusp point that they now look back and see, you know, the invention of double entry bookkeeping and Jacob and, you know, the rise of the merchant class. So 
Anyway, just something to think about um, before you all rush off and buy Dogecoin. <laughs>